Welcome back to another Power BI 3 minute tip. If you're liking these quick Power BI tutorials, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell for more content. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can write output from your Power BI data model to an Excel file. And this is a pretty cool trick that involves writing an R script. And currently, Power BI only allows you to export a selected item such as this table. If you come to the top right and you click uh, the ellipses and export data, you can export to a CSV. And this is good if you just want to click on your data and export it but it doesn't allow you to export data that isn't on this table, and it doesn't allow you to export to multiple tabs in case you have a lot more data you'd like to show. So I wanna show you a way that you can write just a little bit of R script to export whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be visible on the page. So if we take a look at what I have here, this is an R visual down here that's gonna run some code. So if we have it on, uh, on write mode, every change that we make to a slicer is continuously running this R code and rewriting a new Excel spreadsheet for us. So if I select Germany and I take this unit price down a little bit, we have different data now. And behind the scenes, it was writing R code to uh, write an Excel sheet to a destination of my choosing. So I have this outputting to a file called output. And if we open it up, we can see what it wrote um, to an Excel file. So we have data here. We also have a second tab with a couple other things that I wanted to see as well that weren't on the uh, weren't on the table. So if we look at the data tab, we have our selection, our English product category name. Um, on the data uh, on the tab two, we have English product category name and tax amount, which are um, which tax amount is not on this table. So it's actually exporting data that's not visible to us on the screen. And we can actually throw in whatever we want from our data model and output that to the Excel file. So I wanna take you through how you can put this together for yourself because it's not that many steps. So we will go ahead and open up a clean sheet. So this doesn't have that R code written. First of all, we're gonna uh, bring in an R visual and we're just gonna throw this here. So in order to use an R visual, we have to bring in at least one column of data. So we are going to go ahead and start with our category. So that's English product category name. And I'm gonna rename that just a category to make it easier. So it's bringing in category now. And when it brings in category, we don't actually even have to use that. We just need to plot something because an R visual needs to show a plot. So we're gonna plot one one, doesn't really do anything, but it's gonna allow us to run code in the background. So next we need to open up R. And when you have R installed, you're gonna to need to install a package called OpenXLSX. So in order to do that, all you have to do is type in install.packages. And we are installing OpenXLSX. Go ahead and close off the parentheses and run it run through the install process, get that package. And once you have that package, you can reference it in the code. So if you have it properly installed, you'll be able to type in library, open XLSX. And if you click run, you shouldn't have a problem. It shouldn't air out and you should still see your same plot. So moving on, um, in order to write to a file, you have to give it a one, a data set. The data set is going to be your actual output. And two, you're gonna to have to call the write.xlsx function. Um, in order to do so, let's go ahead and create a list of data sets. So our tabs are gonna be equal to the list function. And this is where we're gonna specify the name of our tab. So let's call this tab one. And we're gonna set that equal to data set which if you're familiar with our, um, our visuals, data set is the default data frame that is bringing in data into our R visual. So we're setting tab one equal to data set. And then simply, we just need to call the write.xlsx function. We are going to pass in our list of data sets, tabs. We are gonna set file equal to a file location of your choosing. I'm choosing my C drive, users, Parker, documents, output, 
output.xlsx, but I'm actually going to change this for this new demo. I'm going to call it output2.xlsx, and we can close that off. Uh, one thing to take note is you are using these forward slashes, not backslashes, which are the default windows. R uses backslashes. And now that we have that set up, that's all we need to actually write that output. So let's go ahead and click run script. So I click run script manually, but it will also run with every change in selection. So if we change this to Canada, you can see it running again, and it's going to run some more output. So let's go ahead and check out output two. And there we go. We have English product category name that was written to tab one of this XLSX worksheet. And we only have English product category name because, uh, because we only passed in category. If we wanted to bring in other things, we could throw in other things from this tab. But let's go ahead and add a couple things that aren't relevant to this table that are totally in the background. So let's just grab a couple of things. We'll grab firstly uh, tax amount and we'll grab unit price. Um, and that looks pretty good. So we have category tax amount and unit price. So if we want to split this up to two different tabs, we can then call, uh, let's say tab two, and we'll set that equal to data set two, which we will make right now. Data set two, we're gonna set that equal to data set. We're gonna give it all the rows by giving it a comma we then want to give it specific um, columns for us to return. So let's go ahead and return uh, just the tax amount for the second, uh, the second tab. So we'll go ahead and give it the category and we'll give it tax amount. So now data set two is only going to return us the category and tax amount columns. So that's what's gonna make it different than the first data set. So we're setting tab two equal to data set two. And now when we write .xlsx, it's gonna write us a second tab. And that's what I kind of feared. We have an error here, and I think that's because this is actually English product category name. So that alias here doesn't actually affect the name that uh, the name of the data that's being passed in. So this is set to write now. So we can see it wrote successfully and we can come to see output two. And now you'll see that there are two tabs. Tab, tab one had all the data. Tab two um, is going to just contain the column that we specified, that tax amount. So I'm gonna throw in a couple other tips here. Um, we can see that our, um, our headers don't look too good, so we can add a little bit of code to make our headers look nicer. So let's go ahead and add one more line. And this is going to be um, something where we can specify this header style. We'll save it to an object called uh, HS, and we're gonna use the create style function. We can say something like font size equals 14, font color, and it's a British package, I believe, that's why color is spelled that way, equals, and we can just give the font color FFFFFF. Um, we'll close it off. We'll give it H align, so horizontal align equals center. Uh, we'll give it FG fill equals uh, hash 4F81BD. And we'll give a look at what that looks like. So let's go uh, make sure you close out of the output too, or you won't be able to overwrite it. So if you go ahead and click the run button, I have one error here. Let's see what that error is. Uh, unexpected. Yep, I have an extra colon there. Instead, I needed um, quotation marks. So let's go ahead and run that, and it wrote successfully. So let's take a look at what it looks like now. Uh, not sure if there's, oh, we didn't call the um, header. So in order to actually use that header style that we're creating, we actually have to pass in another parameter to the write.xlsx function, and that is header style equals hs, and hs is the object that we created. So let's go ahead and close out of output two. We'll close out of output one as well, and let's run that. And when you run that, it's going to save that file, 
and we have a little bit different uh, header style. So that's how you call a header style. So I wanna add in one more little tip here. Um, so this is going to run uh, every time you change a slicer selection, which may not be ideal in case your model is really big, you don't wanna output that much data. In order to get around cons uh, consistently writing it, we can create a little functionality to allow us to specify if we want read or write mode to be activated. So let's go ahead and create a new table that'll give us our two options. We will call this um, read write. We will call this column selection. And we'll give the two options of read and write. Once that's loaded in, we're gonna throw this into a slicer. Specifically, I wanna use a custom visual called the chiclet slicer because it allows us to have that nice um, button functionality. So if I type in chiclet and I add that to the file, now we have the chiclet slicer. Let's go ahead and throw that up at the top here. We will take our, um, let's go ahead and grab that new table we added, which is read, write, and selection. We'll throw that in the category make that a little bit bigger. So just give it a bigger text size. Cool, now we have our two options here. Um, we need to change a couple things under general. We have multiple select, which will turn off, and we have force select, which will turn on. So we will have read and write here. So basically, if it's read, it's not going to run this R code. If it's write, it will. So the way we're going to invoke that selection is right above write.xlss, right before it actually writes the file, we can use an if statement, and we'll say if data set uh, money symbol, and we are actually going to have to bring in selection here. So let's go ahead and bring selection, and we'll call first. So it's bringing in the first selection from the selection, and we're gonna say if data set, selection equals equals right we want to run this code so we're actually going to have to specify that we only want to take into account the first row of data for selection because it's passing in read or write uh, multiple times for each row we actually only want to check to see if the first row equals right once it does we can go ahead and click run script and that'll run through we can see that it was updated at 505 Let's go back and uh, if we click on read, um, as we change selections, we can see the time is now 5.06, but you see that it didn't update um, to 5.06 because it's on read mode. So just another example, if we go ahead and change it to write and change some slicer selections, we can see that it should have a new updated, yep, it has a new updated timestamp of 5.06. So that is our output. And that's how we're going to give it that uh, read or write functionality. So if you're in here and you're changing a lot of things and you don't want it consistently writing to an SLXX file, you can just have it on read. But the moment you want to actually output some of that data to Excel, just switch it over to write and it'll write that, um, that, function, uh, that data for you. So one more thing I wanted to note is you probably don't want this random R visual on the page. You can cover this up pretty easy. Go ahead and take a text box, throw it over, hide it with the table. There's a couple ways you can get around it, but it needs to be visible. So you can't hide it using the view pane that will deactivate the R code. So um, just hide it with something, throw it under a couple of layers and it'll work just fine and continue to run in the background. So I hope you get some functionality um, out of this little tip here. Uh, I found that it works really, uh, it works best when you have an application type report so I was working on something that required me to output about 10 tabs of data that wasn't being shown on the screen and this worked pretty nicely. So I hope you can get it to work for you. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next Power BI 3 Minute Tip.